The Honourable Member for Barrie Innisfil. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker, and I want to thank, uh, thank you for the opportunity to uh, rise here today to speak in support of uh, this bill. And I will tell you, I'm actually quite shocked uh, at the fact that the government wouldn't be supporting uh, uh, their own private members in this particular situation, uh, given the uh, nature of this bill. Uh, to potentially uh, save lives uh, across this country. And uh, certainly on this side of the House, we value um, we life. We value the ability of individuals to help people in certain situations where there is an emergency. And Mr. Speaker, I can speak to that uh, on a first-hand basis, given the fact that I spent 30 and a half years as a firefighter. Uh, I am trained in first aid. I am trained in CPR, and I'm trained in... Uh, AED, and uh, I've seen firsthand the impact that that training can have, not just with myself, but with my colleagues and several thousands of colleagues across the country who are trained to act, and in particular, those uh, who are not paid professionals who are there when people need them. And so to spend uh, 10 minutes of your speech talking about uh, the implementation of the budget, which I think we're dealing with tomorrow, uh, I find a little disingenuous, and I can certainly understand my colleague from Prince George Caribou standing on a point of order, uh, in particular when the uh, parliamentary secretary was focused on, uh, on uh, his government's middle-class tax fraud. So I will say, <clears throat> I will say uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, given the experience that I've had, uh, that's why I rise in support of this uh, private member's bill. Uh, you know, just after I got elected to Parliament, I'll give you an example of how uh, helping people uh, in an emergency situation uh, is, is beneficial. Just after I got elected to Parliament, I think it was my second trip to Ottawa. I was heading home back to Barrie Innisfil, and uh, driving down Bank Street, uh, there was someone that was hit by a car. And my medical gloves are never too far away, Mr. Speaker, and I actually stopped uh, as, a, as one would expect me to, to help this individual until the uh, fire department and the ambulance showed up. And that's really what this bill is speaking to. But I will also say, Mr. Speaker, that in Barry Innisville, uh, we have a tremendous amount of experience with respect to uh, AEDs. And it goes back, and I want to spend a little bit of time talking about uh, Chase McEachran, uh, Mr. Speaker. And for those of us uh, in this country who don't know Chase. Chase was a hockey player from Barrie, a prolific goal scorer who at the age of five scored 130 goals while he played for the Vaughn Kings minor Wee AAA team in the Greater Toronto Hockey League. In 2005, at the age of 11 after being injured playing a pickup football game at school, he went to the emergency room where doctors found Chase's heart was beating up to 150 uh, times a minute. He went by air ambulance then to St. Uh, Sick Children's Hospital in Toronto and underwent a cardiovert in which doctors returned his heart rhythm back to normal with a small electric pulse. And uh, while Chase was able to return to school and to continue playing hockey, but this time under doctor's orders while wearing a heart monitor. It was at that time, Mr. Speaker, that Chase started a campaign to make AEDs mandatory in hockey arenas and schools everywhere because he realized that heart problems just didn't affect older people. Chase, in fact, wrote to Don Cherry, and he got Don Cherry involved, writing the hockey commentator a letter asking for his support. And what has become legend, Mr. Speaker, Don Cherry actually brought it up on Coach's Corner. Sadly. Uh, before the campaign had a chance to fly, Chase collapsed during gym class and was rushed to hospital where it was uh, discovered that he had suffered severe brain damage due to a lack of oxygen. And uh, after a heartbreaking six days, Mr. Speaker, on a respirator, his parents made the decision uh, to take him off. Now, uh, as a result of that tragedy, uh, the Chase McEachern uh, Memorial Fund aims to have an automatic external defibrillator or AED in public places such as community centers and arenas. And it's a legacy from this tragedy that Chase's parents and his father John uh, have carried on uh, to, in Chase's memory. 
And since 2006, Mr. Speaker, over 12,000, 12,000 AEDs have been put in these places because of the Chase McEachran Memorial Fund. And in fact, just two weeks ago, uh, May 16th, I attended a CPR and AED training session in Barrie, uh, a Georgian Chevrolet that acted uh, as uh, not only a free training session uh, that was put on by Mr. McEachran and others, uh, but it also was there to benefit the Chase McEachran Memorial, Memorial Fund. And this Sunday, uh, there is a golf tournament at Angus Glen uh, to help support the fund. But can you imagine, Mr. Speaker, an 11-year-old boy uh, having that great of an impact uh, on this country and having 12,000 AEDs placed? Wow. Now, I also... And that does deserve a round of applause. It deserves a round of applause from all places, all uh, members of this House. And I also want to highlight as well, Mr. Speaker, the significance of the Simcoe County Public Access Defibrillator Training. And since 2006, uh, Simcoe County paramedics have trained 11,485 people uh, in first aid, CPR, and the use of an AED since the start of our program uh, with 1,307 people trained in 2015. 14 public access defibrillator saves have been made since the program started, and in 2015, the latest statistics show that three people have been saved by public access defibrillators. So to suggest that this isn't a priority, I think, uh, is misguided for this government. Now, I will say, and I did hear the Honourable Parliamentary Secretary speak about tax credits uh, and the fact that uh, they wouldn't be supporting them. Uh, but when you look at uh, some of the impacts that tax credits have had, particularly on the issue of life safety like this, I think there shouldn't be any doubt that this is something uh, that this government should be considering. Certainly on this side of the House, we support it. But one of the things that I want to focus on, on, on tax credits and the significance that they have to people in this country, Mr. Speaker, and that is uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, fitness tax credit. And one of the things that I, I don't think any of us should really uh, be, uh, be uh, going against is the fact that health and fitness of our children is paramount to the future of this country. And from 2006 to 2015, uh, $1.13 billion in tax credits have been claimed by Canadian families just with the fitness tax credit alone. That has meant that middle-class families, Mr. Speaker, have been able to put their kids into yeah. sport uh, and receive tax credits. I know in my situation, I've spoken about this before in this House, uh, with four children, it has made uh, it that much easier for me to put my kids into fitness activities. And then on the arts side, uh, between 2011 and 2015 tax years, Canadians have claimed $190 million in arts credits. And so those uh, credits uh, have, been, have, have been wiped out, Mr. Speaker, and yet they directly impacted Canadian families. This particular private member's bill uh, would not only impact Canadian families and potentially save some lives, Absolutely. but what it, it would, what it would do, Mr. Speaker, is add as an incentive for people to train in first aid, in CPR, and in the training of automatic external defibrillators. Now, it's my understanding as well in some of the uh, talks that we've had, Mr. Speaker, that right now only 18 percent of Canadians are current in their first aid and CPR uh, training. And so if there's any way, any way at all, that we can ask uh, that they can be, uh, they can be incented, incented to continue on with that training, Mr. Speaker, I don't see that as, as an issue. Um, and, you know, the bottom line here is that we want people to act in the event of an emergency. We want them to be able to, to sit there and render assistance until first responders are able to come. You know, oftentimes in, in, uh, in first aid and CPR training, we talk about the golden hour, uh, the golden 15 minutes where you can actually make a difference in somebody's life by starting CPR and first aid, Mr. Speaker. And just yesterday, just yesterday, I'm proud to say that in Barrie, Ontario, the first outside automatic external defibrillator was delivered. And it's so important that people not only know first aid, it's so important that people not only know CPR, 
but also to give them the ability to train yeah. on AEDs. Absolutely. And this private member's bill would do that. And we on this side are very supportive of this. And I thank the member from Cambridge for bringing it forward. I think it's great. Thank you.